Can you believe Catholics? Are Catholics stupid or what? Catholics actually worship statues. Instead of worshiping God who's alive in heaven, they worship statues and like Mary and saints and stuff like that. I mean, how silly. Look at this thing. This statue, this statue, this isn't the real Jesus, you know. It's not the real Mary, you know. And this, St. Francis, he's not a real saint. It's a piece of wood with a little painting on it. And you Catholics pray to this? You Catholics pray to these? They can't hear you. Wait, what was that? No, he can't speak. He's made out of plaster and marble. It's impossible, Catholics. Wake up, come on. Everybody knows that Jesus is real and these are false gods. So stop praying to statues and get your soul saved today. My name is Brian Mercier. I'm a Catholic and I do not endorse that message. I actually find that message stupid. Why? Because of course Catholics don't worship statues. Of course they can't hear us. Of course we can't talk to them and we expect them to listen to us. And the fact that Protestants and other religions actually even say that is really nonsensical. It means they've taken this much time, maybe less, to look into what Catholics actually believe. Most people who persecute the Catholic Church haven't even read one single book written by a Catholic. Not even one single book, which means they don't even know what Catholics believe. Uh, read the Catechism of the Catholic Church. You can find it online, other religions, and it talks about false worship, that we should worship God alone, that Jesus Christ alone is God. We know that. You're preaching to the choir when you tell us that. But think about this. When you walk in, as soon as this sits on my desk at the other end of my house, and as soon as I see it, it brings to life the life of St. Francis. It's kind of like the national anthem, Oh Say Can You See. All I gotta say is those words and the whole rest of the song will come to your mind. And it will create the image of why the song was written and the victory that the United States had. And you only need to hear a few words to get the concept of the whole picture. So when I say St. Francis, I remember that he was a really rich noble and he had so much money, but then God called him to rebuild the church and he left everything and got into rags and he went around and preached the word of God and he preached the scriptures and he preached the love of Jesus and he changed the world and he reformed the church in a lot of ways. This is a reminder of how wonderful St. Francis is. This is a reminder of the life and legacy of holiness he left behind and that I'm called to follow Jesus in the same way. I'm called to follow Jesus with the same passion. This isn't the real Jesus, it's just a representation of him. And in fact, he wasn't white and he didn't look like this, but it reminds us of him. These rays that come out of his heart symbolize love and mercy. And that's who Jesus is. It's love and mercy. And every time I see the statue, I remember that Jesus is love and Jesus is mercy. You know, I don't need a statue to remind me that. I know that. But when you see this, that's what it reminds us of. See, back in the day, in churches, before the Bible was even around in the 400s, and in before, I mean, even up till almost the Protestant Reformation, till the time of the printing press, people couldn't read. Nine-tenths of the Roman Empire were illiterate. You actually think that Jesus built a Bible-only church? I think not. It would have been the dumbest idea in the whole world. The, the purpose is that he started a teaching and preaching church. And before the time of the Bible where most people could read, these were the Bible. This right here, I have it since it's almost Christmas time here. These, this is the story of the Bible in picture form. We can see this and it calls to mind, like, oh, say, can you see? It calls to mind the whole story of the Bible, the whole story of the nativity and the birth of Jesus. And this reminds us that kings from afar came to worship the Christ child because he's the one and only God and he came here to die for our salvation. Now, we don't worship these. They're just reminders, kind of like pictures in our wallet. You know, if you carry a picture of your friend or your wife or your husband in your wallet, you're not worshiping it. You know, even if you took it out and kissed it, you're not worshiping it. We just do these expressions, but they don't actually worship it. Now, some people will say, well, God commanded that no idols or graven images be made in the Bible. Actually, that was in Exodus chapter 20. It was in the Old Testament, not the New Testament. And he was talking to the Israelites because they were around pagan lands who all worshipped false idols similar to these, but they actually built stuff like golden calves and worshipped them and thought that cows were gods and trees were gods and all these things were gods. They had all these false gods. 
Of course he's going to say, don't build those and don't follow suit. Obviously, but God himself in Exodus 25, just five chapters later, had two statues built. He had two graven images built and placed on the Ark of the Covenant. He had another graven image built in uh, Numbers 21 when he told, put the, the golden serpent on the, the pole and he made the Israel's, Israelites look at it so that they could get rid of their diseases. I mean, throughout the Old Testament, God had images built. The command wasn't don't just build images. The, the command was don't build them and worship them. We're not worshiping these images. They're just pictures. Like our friends and family on earth, we have pictures all around the house. These are the pictures of our friends and family who have gone before us. They're models in their faith. They're examples in the faith. They're holiness. St. Francis is a model of holiness. And so is St. Anthony. So is St. Joseph. So are all the saints. They did extraordinary things. And we seek to follow their example, to follow Christ just as passionately as they do. They're not idols. They're examples. And this, I do approve. If you like this video, you think it's important, and you want to know more, subscribe to my channel. Make sure to like it, and make sure to share it with others so that they can get the good news too. If you want to support me on Patreon, check out the information below. And if you have a comment, please put it below. If you have some follow-up questions or you want to know more about what Catholics believe, where to find it in the Bible, put it in the comments below. Or maybe I'll even make a video on it. Have a great day, and God bless you.